Greetings everyone, and today I'm checking out a brand new lens from Tokina, and it's a fisheye lens for Sony and Fuji's mirrorless camera systems with smaller APS-C sized sensors. It is the Tokina 8mm f2.8 fisheye. It is a fully manual lens, although that's never really much of an issue as autofocus is rarely needed on such a wide angle optic. Its price is going to be 300 US dollars when it comes out, and I would like to thank Tokina for sending me a sample copy of the lens for testing, although as usual, this is a totally independent review. It's a long time since I'd tested out a fisheye lens. For those of you wondering what they do, well, here you go, a picture offers a thousand words. They offer an extreme level of barrel distortion for artistic effect, offering an incredible 180 degree field of view. Whenever a photographer buys their first fisheye lens, they tend to shoot with it endlessly because they really give you a lovely new challenge, although you will get tired of the effect eventually and just save it for special occasions. As I mentioned, this is designed for cameras with smaller APS-C sized sensors. Here is what your images will look like if you're shooting on a full frame camera in full frame mode, both with and without the removable lens hood. So, you're not quite getting a fully circular image there on full frame. The lens itself reminds me of just about every low priced Chinese manual focus lens that I've handled, but that's actually no bad thing. The whole thing is constructed out of a solid slab of metal. It weighs 280 grams, so it's light, but you'll still know that it's there on your camera. There's no weather sealing that I can see. The aperture ring is at the back of the lens. It turns smoothly, which is nice for some video makers, although stills photographers often prefer to have some clicks in there so that you can have a tactile feeling of, of how much you're stopping the lens down. Then comes the manual focus ring. Those of you who have never used a manual focus lens before will find that this is a great place to start, as at such a wide angle, it's generally pretty easy to get things in focus. Focusing to infinity will mean that anything beyond about three meters will be nicely in focus for you, so bear that in mind for street and landscape photography. The focus ring itself turns smoothly and precisely. At the front, we get a bulbous front glass element and a removable hood, which could be useful for people who insist on shooting this thing on a full frame camera. This copy of the lens was an early production sample and did not come with a lens cap. I think it's safe to say the final version will have that included for you, though. Overall, this is some very basic but extremely solid build quality from a fully manual lens. It doesn't perform magic tricks for you, but it's tough enough to last until, well, long after the apes have taken over the planet. Alright, let's take a look at image quality. My normal test chart does not work with fisheye lenses, so here is another scene instead, and I'll be testing it on my little Sony A5100 with its 24 megapixel APS-C sized sensor. There are no in-camera corrections available for this lens. At f2.8, in the middle of the image, we see excellent sharpness and contrast. Over in the corners, sharpness continues to be very good until we reach the very edges. f4 and f5.6 look marginally sharper, although again, the very edges are still a bit soft. Stop down to f11 though, and those very edges see just a slight increase in sharpness, and well, that's as much sharpness as you can get out of the lens really. Overall, it is a sharp optic, although the very edges of your image, as I've shown you, will struggle. Something else I should note is that the lens shows very little vignetting. By the way, you couldn't see it so well in those images, but take a look at this picture. Here you can see that, on contrasting edges, in the corners of your images, we do catch a fair bit of colour fringing. It's pretty bad actually, although honestly, this is par for the course for even the most expensive fisheye lenses. Let's take a look at this lens's distortion now. Hey, it's a fisheye lens! Duh! As you can see, the image circle stretches beyond the limits of my test chart. The distortion pattern itself doesn't have too strong of a central pinch to it, leaving you with dramatic but not crazy images. As you might be able to see here, the Tokina lens's closest competitor, the much older Samyang 8mm f2.8 Mark II, displays much the same moderate fisheye pattern. Ok, let's take a look at close up image quality now. The lens can focus down to 10cm, and that is one area where the competing Samyang lens I just mentioned definitely isn't as good. 
The Tokina lens manages to stay just as sharp as ever when you're shooting close up, even at f2.8, as you can see here. Let's see how well the lens works against bright lights now. Important, because when you're shooting at such a wide angle, they will pop up often for you. We encounter a number of issues here, from flaring to a giant red ring appearing around the center of your image. Not good. And while we're working in the dark, let's take a look at coma smearing. On bright points of light in the image corners, coma smearing is visible, where it joins the rather strong color fringing. It's the same at f4, but slowly begins to reduce at f5.6. At f8, it's gone, leaving behind just some purple color fringing. Let's zoom out now and look for sun stars. They only really become apparent at about f16, where we can also see some further problems with flaring at the lower aperture. And finally, bokeh. The only way to get out of focus backgrounds with this lens is by basically shooting at the minimum focus distance and at f2.8. When you do, the quality of that bokeh looks okay. Nothing interesting nor controversial is going on here. Overall, well, this is a pretty good new fisheye lens from Tokina, albeit not without some of the fisheye lens's common failings. It is pretty sharp, even at f2.8, well, except right in the extreme edges, and it shows a lot of color fringing in those edges too. Its fisheye distortion pattern is not too wild, so your images look quite pleasant, really, although it's not always easy to compose a nice fisheye image in the first place. Despite its bright maximum aperture, I should warn you that it does seem to have some optical issues when working in the dark. Build quality is fine, and it's good enough value for money. Overall, if fisheye is what you're on the market for, then it does come recommended. Okay, I'll admit, it was pretty fun for me to test out that fisheye lens, it's been a while since the last one. I'd like to see more being made for full frame cameras, though. Anyway, whatever camera you have, I hope you find my reviews helpful, and if you do, then check out my Patreon page, there is a link in the description below. Supporters there make a big difference to me keeping this channel going, and they get all kinds of extra bonus content that I put out pretty much every week, including special exclusive videos. Take care, everyone.